Jet scooter finished. Ah. Beep, 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 door. Okay, my oil system. Got me 12 volt like sump drainy pump here. Hope that's gonna do the job. We're gonna shove that in this little gap, which I've made for it. One side goes into this bit of tube, because for those of you who haven't seen the first video, this is gonna be the oil reservoir. It's not just the frame. And then the other side, obviously the positive side, has got to come out and got to go into the turbo. But I need to know what the pressure is all the time, and I need to be able to bleed it off just in case it's being over-pressurised. So we need some sort of system, like a bypass system we can put in, and then probably a pressure gauge which can sit up on the handlebars so I can see what it's doing at all times. And also, that will look pretty cool. Yes! Oh, it fell off! What, you mean that thing that was held on with no nuts and bolts? It fell off? That drops in there, very nice, beautiful. Let's get this pump set up. Okay, let's give you a little tour of what I've just done. We have our oil reservoir, it's going to come out into the pump, pressured into the turbo. So I know what the pressure is, little bleed off pipe up to the handlebars with a pressure gauge. Now to regulate this pressure, because once the turbo gets hot, the oil gets thinner, the pressure drops, you need to be able to turn it up a little bit. I've put a speed controller on the pump because I thought, I'm using an electric pump, I can alter how much, you know, pumpiness it gives. So that's how I'm going to do that. Now then, the next thing I need to do is the gas system. I'm not going to fill it up with oil and test the oil system because I don't want it all full of oil dribbling out everywhere. So I've got these uh, two propane cylinders. I'm going to put them either side of here. I think we're going to need to because if we try and draw too much gas out of these, they just freeze up and then they, they give nothing. So we'll put them two there, down somewhere uh, yeah, into the end there. I think we'll have two inlets. We'll have a, a regulated one for like the idle. And then I think I'm going to put like a solenoid valve, which just blips full gas pressure into it. So rather than a throttle, it'll just be a button. It's like a <laughs> I don't know. It might work. You know, this whole thing's a massive experiment. That could be too small. The oil system might not up to it. And the throttle might not work. Ha! Huh. Good project, Colin.
some of that, boy, have some of that. Okay, ready for a test. Right, I've put some oil in it. So first thing I need to know, can I maintain oil pressure on the inlet or can I get any? So if I just plug this in here, we're looking for around one bar. Yeah, I can hear it. <laughs> I've nailed that. Just under one bar. And we want a bit more oil pressure. There we look at that. That is exactly what I'd have ordered. Boom. Right. Does it fire up? Now I've got the shed doors open because last time I tried to uh, start one of these in here with the shed doors shut, I nearly blew the whole blooming shed up. <laughs> However, this one is considerably better made than that. Tiny bit of gas. Oh Christ, the uh, impeller's red hot. We may need a little bit more air. Well, I might take this off actually, just in case that is having an effect on it. Right. small gas bottles off and replaced it with a big one. The little gas tube, I thought to myself, I've drilled quite big holes in there because the uh, cordless drills I've got will only hold like a minimum of a two mil drill. And I was thinking that's that's quite big. So I've put some smaller holes in that. If this doesn't work, I think we're gonna have to completely look at the design of this thing. Come on, come on. working but then it didn't work okay so I've got it to run for like five seconds but it runs really poorly and I can feel it like blowing back out of the compressor out of the inlet so I'm like why is that doing that it's like it's expanding so much it can't get out the turbine side it's having to blow back through the inlet so I thought the combustion chamber can't be big enough so then I started to like go over the calculations and then I looked over here because all this writing on here is what me and my mate Pete did for this very project. And look, it says here, if it is less than 45 millimeters, that's the inlet of the turbo, you times it by three, not two. The answer is literally on the wall. So this needs to be bigger. Well, of course I can't make this bigger because then it won't fit in here. So I've made a bigger one. Let's see if this works. Colin, eh? does not read instructions, even his own. putting the nozzle back on there. Yes! Right, so it works, we've got it running. It doesn't produce much thrust, and if you try and rev it highly, it just seems to vibrate and spit oil anywhere. So, me thinks this turbo is shot. Oh yeah. Let's face it, somebody give it to me, come off a car, probably come off a car for a reason, because it's shot. We're gonna have to go bigger. Bigger, 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 bigger. <laughs> okay, we have a beast of a turbo now. Now, thank you very much to the uh, people at Fast Turbo at Corby. They were very nice. They even gave me a brand new small one to test just in case it was the old knackered one, but unfortunately, still the same results. So now I'm gonna go away. I'm gonna rebuild the combustion chamber and everything to suit our ginormous turbo. And then next video, we're gonna test it. 
Surely this is going to produce some thrust. It's massive! It's got to get furs on the move. And if it doesn't, well, it's probably something to do with me. I must be doing something wrong. But we can all learn from this experience. Righty ho! Hope you've enjoyed the ride. See you in the next one! Subscribe!